Whoever you are and wherever you are on your journey of faith, welcome to our virtual worship service. Today we will continue to celebrate the season of Epiphany. We will join our hearts and minds together, ready to learn about Jesus, who continues to bring light into our world. At our Merivale Fallowfield Pastoral Charge, we are committed to practicing God's radical love and inclusion. Our charge believes worship is intended to radicalize us, change us, and form us into faithful followers who practice the compassionate teachings of Jesus. It certainly is nice to get a reprieve from the bitter cold for a few days, but even though our city of Ottawa is not as cold as it was, doesn't mean that people do not need food and shelter during these continuing winter days and challenging times of COVID. That is why we are grateful for your generous financial support to the organizations that desperately need help currently. The Elizabeth Fry Society, Centre 507 and the Ottawa Mission and local food banks are just a few that are dedicated to helping the most vulnerable in our society. You can find information about these communities on our website. If you would like to donate to the church, you can do so online by e-transfer to muchurch at bellnet.ca or you can send a check to either Merivale or Fallowfield Church. You can find each address on our website www.maravalefallowfield.org. These are all the announcements at this time, and so we hope that you will enjoy the worship service that is all about our commitment to making the world a kinder place. As we enter worship, the gates of holiness are open wide. Let us enter and seek the ways of wisdom. Let us follow closely what Jesus teaches, for his words are right and true, and he is the path to justice, peace, and righteousness. Amen.
Today, God is calling us to follow and to serve. And God is moving through the church and the world, showing us how to love and to lead. And God is working through all of creation, drawing us into the warmth of the Spirit. So let us worship God together. Please join me for our opening prayer. Source of our being, we know that when two or more are gathered in your name, your spirit is with us. And so today we come and we virtually join our hearts together in gratitude for life, for the human family, and for all of creation. The one thing that binds us all together is our relationship with you. And so we pray this morning that we will live up to becoming the human family that you have created us to be, always seeing your image in other people. Oh God, you are for us a source of justice and fairness in this world. And so may we always follow the teachings of Jesus that lead to just and equitable relationships. May we always be co-creators in building your kingdom come on earth. And we give you thanks for the interconnectedness of all creation. May we be faithful guardians of our planet and all life on it. And we pray that through scripture, song, prayers, and reflections, we will gain the wisdom to be your eyes, your ears, and your hands in this world. During this worship service, may we learn to claim our place in the movement of transforming ourselves by living the teachings of Jesus that demand we live with respect, justice, and peace. O oh Lord, may your spirit be with us as we offer up to you the ancient prayer of our ancestors in the faith. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. First reading is from Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 9, the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Herein is wisdom. Thanks be to God. Next reading is from Luke 5, verses 1 to 11. Jesus calls the first disciples. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be fishers of people. When they had brought, not, brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Oh, 
Let us pray. May the meditations of all of our hearts be aligned with your love, O oh God, as we watch our two videos from the Ottawa Mission. Amen. Homelessness has been growing rapidly in our city, and the stats from 2019 state that at least 8,000 people are in emergency shelters. Over 12,000 people are waiting for subsidized housing. And on any given night, nearly 100 people have no choice but to sleep outside. These are the stats from before COVID-19, so I can imagine that the numbers have climbed higher. Year after year, people experiencing homelessness increases in Ottawa. As you all know, down through the years, our pastoral charge has faithfully supported the Ottawa mission. And we support the mission because it addresses the immediate needs of people while collaborating with community partners to prioritize long-term solutions for poverty and homelessness. As we shall see in the following short videos, the mission offers a wide array of programs and services, enabling people to improve their lives and build brighter futures. And it provides the tools people need to rebuild their lives, extending mercy, dignity, and compassion to all who enter into their doors. I hope you will learn from these two videos. And I hope they will help you to be encouraged in supporting the Ottawa Mission. The mission was comforting to us. There's somewhere where the door is open that he could enter. The mission had given my father warmth. There's warmth there for these men and women. Everyone that works at the Ottawa Mission has compassion and cares about what they do. And we give them more than just the training. We give them confidence so they believe in themselves because we show them that we believe in them. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like, like I'm a beacon or like a light at the end of the tunnel. I help train and teach the uh, students taking the food service training program. I really developed a passion for helping people because if somebody could do that for me at that given point in my life, I feel like I should be paying it forward to other people too. I have a great joy in my heart. I want to be uh, offering compassion, care. There is so much in each person's life that has its joys and its sorrows that we discover together. It's truly a beautiful place in that we can provide for mental health care and physical health care and meals to those who are homeless, to trauma and addiction services. The mission is a safe and really beautiful place and that they are welcome to come here. When I was 14 years old, I found myself homeless and without any hope. Someone reached out to me and showed me that education would help. And 15 years ago, I started the food service training program here to help other people. One of the most valuable lessons I've learned since volunteering is humility. And I'm thankful to be part of this great group of people who help people and give them hope. The mission staff, they look the men in the eyes. They know their names, their stories. They can start a program, go through recovery. The success rate's absolutely phenomenal. I receive that compassion, interest, affirmation, that nourishment just through listening to the lives of the people I visit here. What I hope uh, for the students 
who use the Stepping Stone Learning Center services, they can be able to rest their bodies, but also their soul. When I'm happy with my life and it just kind of gives people hope in my mind, I wouldn't want to work anywhere else. Being able to care is especially important to me. If I had to describe the mission in one word, it would be a redemption for the second chance that it's given me. I give to the mission because the mission gave so much to my father and my family. And I give to the mission because it gives so much to me. My father was a board member here and uh, he was the one who brought me here probably over 60 years ago. I think it's pretty exciting. I had the privilege of speaking at our 100th year anniversary, which was 2006. Now today, you know, it's, it's humbling to see how the place has grown. The quality of people that have become part of the project, the resources we've been blessed with to carry out these programs. The way in which the mission has grown, it has, I would say, moved with the times and with the challenges that are presented to it. It has been very adaptive. It just makes me think of all the dedication of the staff that's been involved over such a long period of time. And it also makes me think about all the people that have come and gone through the mission and benefited from their services, from their food, from their shelter, and just from that human interaction that's always so present here. I remember her telling me, she said, Mo, don't worry, I'm going to carry some of your pain on my shoulders. And it blew my mind that she would be so loving and so kind. When I first came here, I did not have much going on, and they opened the door for me to get better in life. If I could describe the auto mission in one word, it would be uh, inspiring. Because um, uh, as soon as you come in here, you get inspired to become better and, and do better and chase your dreams and goals. For me, it's compassion. I think that's part of the faith to realize that we're called upon. The commitments that I have both of faith and of the gospel, which um, calls us and challenges us to ensure that those most vulnerable in our society are cared for. Our primary health care clinic, our dental clinic, our addiction services, food services, and so much more that we offer. So it's just really amazing to see that in one place you can find all these resources that actually help and empower our clients. It was healing that was starting. And without the Ottawa mission, there's no way that I would ever be alive today. There's no way I would be where I am today. I have an apartment, I have a job, I have a good life. Four years ago, I was on my way out. But now I'm in and I'm staying in. For an organization to be in the city that long, to be able to provide constant and consistent services to our clients and be the oldest, that is pretty amazing. Every time I come here, something has improved, something has gotten better. If we really want to meet these needs, we're going to get on, get on the pedal and keep it moving. And I think we've done a great job at doing that. The mission continues to be relevant is because it is reaching out in adaptive ways to those who are in need and to bringing and acknowledging the dignity of those whom we serve.
Please join me for our closing prayer. God of love and truth, we have promised to walk in covenant with you and with each other. We have chosen to follow the teachings of Jesus through our faith journey. And it is on this journey that we learn to find out who we are meant to be in this world. It is through this journey that we learn how to hold on to that vision of what creation is meant to be. Oh God, we are like the disciples, eager to answer the call of Jesus to follow him into the messiness of life, including the joys and challenges that come our way. We are grateful that Jesus is with us always and that we are never alone on this journey, for we live in your presence and we are embraced by your love and grace every day. With every new day, we are changed and transformed, and so we pray that our lives will be a reflection of your divine glory. And we see this divine glory in the work that the Ottawa Mission is doing. And we are grateful for them, and so we offer up our gratitude to you for the work that these people do. May your blessings always be upon them. And may others always see us as a blessing, bearing light into dark places and practicing love that casts out hate. Our world is certainly facing many challenges, and so we need good people to build your kingdom come on earth. People of all faith traditions need to lead the way in teaching everyone just how interconnected we all are. And may we who say we follow Jesus be a light to others so that his teachings are evident in our lives. God of our hearts, hear us now as we offer our own gratitude and concerns to you in a moment of silence. And now, may you, the God of justice and mercy, be with us in the week to come. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds on the grace and the love of God, on the teachings of Jesus, and on the blessings of the Holy Spirit. Amen.